Culture is a very different and interesting and category that is uniquely tied to human desire, right? It is not always a political thing. It is about pleasure. It is about, you know, something that gives you joy and happiness, even if it means going against the state policy. My name is Sangeet Kumar and I am an you know, associate professor of communication uh, studies. Uh, and my track is media studies within the communication department. And uh, I'm also currently the director of the international studies program at Denison University. And uh, broadly speaking, my area and field of study would be um, global dimensions of uh, digital popular culture. The idea for this chapter was to think about the ways in which creator culture manifests itself within the you know, geographical kind of terrain of South Asia. There's a way in which the nation state emerges as the dominant lens and the assumption that, you know, oh, the United States is a certain culture and, you know, Mexico is a certain culture, Canada is a certain culture or, you know, India is a certain culture, right? We try to show the limitation of that framework by emphasizing how there are all these flows and collaborations and circuits of consumption, production that cannot be explained by the lens of the nation state. For a long time, the nation state has been shown to be limited as a defining lens or framework through which to understand culture, people, identity. And so we just went through some of those discussions and those literatures. There are a few different examples that we show in the chapter. One is of Southern India, which, uh, you know, within India, one would argue is a region um, but cannot fully be explained by the category India. In many ways, it does not conform to certain ideas of nationhood that may be prevalent in other parts of India, such as in the North, right? And so, you know, that region is actually a better way of thinking about that aspect of creator culture rather than nation. Additionally, we looked at kind of a cross-country, you know, exchange where India and Pakistan, which were a part of the same country till 1947, obviously they separate, but they continue to share a lot of the language, culture, and, you know, many common things, right? Just because a line has been drawn does not mean people begin to suddenly change, right, overnight. There is this very funny prank artist in Pakistan you know, who creates these videos by putting people in these unexpected situations and, you know, basically captures their reactions. We show that even though he's a Pakistani artist and politically India and Pakistan are, you know, at loggerheads, he actually has a very strong fan following in India. And that's because everyone understands him because of the language. And, you know, whenever he posts a video, a majority of those comments are viewers from India who just admiring him and appreciating him. But a lot of the musical background in his videos are actually Bollywood songs and music, right? And so he's also gesturing a little bit to his Indian audience that, hey, like, I'm also one of you, you know? And so, and they see it and they appreciate it. For example, Bollywood, right, is a thriving film industry in India. Historically, there have been a great example of collaboration between Hindus and Muslims of all religions of India. A lot of our artists, in fact, you know, Pakistani artists have come and performed, have acted in films, musicians. Indian films have had a huge audience in Pakistan, and not just in Pakistan, but in that whole region, right? Television, actually, there was a reverse flow, right? So in Bollywood, the films were going from India to Pakistan. In case of television, the television shows were coming from Pakistan to India. And so it was, again, explained purely by common language, common culture, common history, right? You didn't have to explain things to people because they got it. But whenever, uh, you know, political conflict happens, uh, both countries actually, right? Like try to ban these artists from working in each other's cultural industries. You know, Pakistan will ban Indian films and Indian cinema from running in their theaters. But it fails, it almost always fails, right? And one reason for that is piracy. Right, like you can cut off, you know, screenings in cinema halls, but thanks to the internet, you know, culture still flows. There are these, you know, kind of networks of consumption, production, sharing and exchange that can be defined by language, 
by often political ideology, by religion or other kinds of identities. Continuously thinking about those exchanges allows us to have a more accurate picture than only thinking of the national web as a category. As we move ahead, there are these dual tendencies where national identities will continue, some argue, right, will continue to weaken because we see that we actually have this common humanity, I guess. Um, on the other hand, the nation state also continues to, you know, remain stronger than ever before because it has all these technologies to, you know, regulate, police, surveil its citizens. So I think there will be these opposing tendencies of the weakening nation state and the strengthening nation state. And I think creator culture is at the heart of that struggle. We are working uh, on a book which we're tentatively, tentatively calling the digital popular. And it will look at the, you know, ways in which cultures of production, circulation, consumption within India are, you know, reshaping key ideas such as citizenship, politics, culture, identity. Does a book length analysis of this idea of what is happening? What are the ways in which different threads of culture are intersecting with the digital to become something else or something new, right? A new way of doing politics, a new way of entertainment, a new way of asserting citizenship. And that I would say is something that we're all very excited about. And yeah, it continues to take our work on creator culture in India forward.